for that, mm. I should be careful with this, really. You'll never guess what just turned up. I'd love to be one of those people who just has a knack. Why is it always 13? Hello and welcome to Escape in the Motorhome. My name's Daz and this is B. We're a home education, home working family who recently bought a motorhome to go on great adventures. So join us as we take the family on some wild walks, some wild and not so wild camping, explore our surroundings and try new things whilst getting to grips with living and working in our new small space. We experience the highs and lows of motorhome life. And if you enjoy our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Just back from the shops, and this guy looks like he's got a brand new pair of shoes for me. Come on then, let's have a look. These my Christ this is my Christmas present. No, this is my slightly risque purchase from um, AliExpress. So this has come all the way from China direct to me, and it's hopefully our new inverter. I shan't shake it because I'm too scared it'll break. Uh, the first many little purchases that are coming our way. What have you got there then, dear? Well, something that makes me smile, a middle-aged man. Not a middle-aged man makes me smile, sorry. <laughs> something here That's to fine. Make, to make a middle-aged man smile. So, this is my first AliExpress purchase, and this is my second. And this, I'll open these all together, but this should be um, the solar charge controller. So it's going to take the power from solar panels and regulate it and deliver that power uh, in a friendly way to our battery. Exciting. All coming together. Yes, let's just hope it all works. Yes. Testing, testing. So, welcome. You join me in the lounge. Now, opening things like this that I've bought direct from another country or I've imported is a mixture of uh, excitement and total fear because either they risk being damaged and obviously returning international goods is probably going to be quite difficult or I've bought completely the wrong thing because as we all know I am currently working beyond my limits and capability in terms of solar installations. Like with my kids, every day is a school day, right? We've got some great big wall plugs, another connector. It also came with uh, a battery thermometer. This should be the 40 amp uh, model. You can see here possibly on the back, so we've got our solar, solar panel that comes into the solar charger, the ethernet connector which you can run out to your laptop or to a remote meter. And this will help us monitor what's going on with the solar panel and the batteries. So what I want to have a quick look at is where this is going to live. Although I'm looking at buying some Renergy solar panels, I went with this EP Ever brand because of a YouTuber, I think it's called Will Prowse, who does loads of really technical, um, amazing kind of solar, off-grid solar setups from basics right up to really complicated stuff. And he recommended this one over the other option I was looking at, which was the Venergy solar charger control unit. Price for price, they're not far off each other, so you've got a great big heat sink on the back. But it's finding a home for this guy. This little fellow's gonna sit inside a cupboard, so it's just a question of finding which cupboard it's gonna live in. So we've already got a hole going through the roof up here, and it's easily identifiable above, so locating another cable to come through here would be nice and easy. But uh, even I can see this is not going to fit underneath our aerial equipment. It could fit sideways on here, but to be honest, it's pretty hard to read the panel. So I'm thinking perhaps you make use of the unit next door, which currently is just housing a packet of Nor soup. You can see there's no cable entries on the top. Everything really comes in. Everything comes in from below. It's going to be needed. It's going to need some. A little bit of room maybe venting above and then space for all for those thick cables to curve into. So if that's up on there, it could be that we just have this um, mounted to one side of it. Something like that. And then we've got access through this cupboard down into the void behind here potentially. Ideally, we're trying to run the cables down somewhere like the inside of here and under the seats and into that big black void down there. There we go, some stuff down there. Um, with the inverter possibly behind this seat unit here or, or here with uh, a plug socket perhaps on the outside. Still got a few more things to order. So solar panels, lithium batteries and some cabling, some roof mounts, some Sikaflex and a whole heap of sunshine. 
because I'm not doing this in the rain. So off I went shopping. First of all, I wanted to try out the Eco-Worthy batteries to check their price. So 100 amp hour is fortunately out of stock, but it was 500 pounds anyway. Next, Eco-Tree, another 100 amp hour battery, almost 700 pounds. Bit too much for me too. So Renergy, another brand I've been watching, 424 with a 15% discount, brilliant. It was in stock and postage was only two to four days. Plus there was a five pound off coupon taking it down to 420. Another site, Mano Mano, also had the battery listed at 434, so about 10 pounds more than eBay. And Renergy's own site had it at 450. Now onto solar panels, back to the eBay Renergy shop. If you look here, one panel is 84 pounds, but two panels actually works out at 90 pounds each. Go figure. If you continue to scroll through their store though, you'll find another listing for solar panels. Well, just the 100 watt on its own. And what do you know, it's 80 pounds 86 instead of the 84 listed further up. So I'll be taking two of those, please. Next on the list, mountings. You can see here, 17 pounds for a full set of mounts plus the gland. On the Renergy site, a full set of six is about 30 pounds and the gland is about nine pounds extra. So I've got two panels, so I'm gonna need two of these. Last on my list for now, the solar extension cables to take the power from the roof and down into the van. These two were a bargain, 10 gauge, three meters. So all in all, 630 pounds, a discount of 670. And if you buy through eBay, 509 nectar points. I'm just printing the home ed stuff for the time away, but I'm a little bit worried about Daryl doing this work on the solar panel. No, it's not the abominable snowman, it's B, and I'm in here this evening to try and Christmasify, if that's a word, the motorhome. I think we're definitely going to have to blue tack this down before we get moving tomorrow. This is going to be sliding all over the place. Yes, I've lined up some clogs inside the motorhome. It's a rather strange tradition, I'm sure you're thinking. What's that got to do with Christmas? But it's something to do with the Dutch tradition of Sinterklaas. And we do have some Dutch heritage in our family, which we try and hold on to from Daz's side of the family. And on the 5th of December at night time, Sinterklaas pays the children a visit and fills their clogs, probably a bit too small for them now. They've never worn them. It's very decorative though. Sinterklaas fills the clogs with chocolate or sweets or treats. And that's what happens in the Netherlands. So they get Sinterklaas and then they'll get Father Christmas on the 24th of December too. Lucky children. Now we'll be having Sinterklaas away because it happens to be on Daz's birthday. And so we'll be waking up in the Forest of Dean on his birthday, which is something exciting to look forward to. We're also planning to surprise the children. They think we're just going away tomorrow to Bath. They don't know that we're going to carry our journey on up past Forest of Dean, all the way up through to Wales and to our friends. They really, really desperately wanted to see their friends before Christmas because it's been a long time, but presumed that we wouldn't be able to do it. So it's going to be lovely to spring that surprise on them whilst we're away tomorrow. Oh, right. Well, I don't mind telling you, it's pretty cold out here. So I'm in the back of the van again. I've had a little bit more tech turn up because of course it's Black Friday this week. So I've been on a bargain hunt. <clears throat> You've seen the EP Ever charge control that I've got. And I think you may have seen the arrival of this fella. So this, you should be careful with this really. So this was another import from um, AliExpress. And this is our inverter. You know, there are reasons to go with brands, you know, brand confidence, you've got, um, should something go wrong, there's probably better customer support. But I've seen this brand uh, on Amazon um, from sellers in the UK, I've seen it online. And I've, you know, my budget is such that I unfortunately have to take the occasional risk. So I've taken a risk with this one. The plan is for our system to be a, a 400, so that's four times 100 watt uh, panels on the roof. And then I've gone for, uh, this is actually a, a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Modified sine wave inverters are cheaper. However, there's a risk to some types of equipment. Old, I think it's older equipment, or it could be just very sensitive types of equipment, whether it's laptops 
or phone if you can do the advice is to go for pure sign but of course that costs money unless you're buying it from china where they're all pretty much made anyway i imagine so um we'll open this very carefully with the old trusty pen knife so because of the size of this i've got to think about where this is going to be housed we've got some thick cables with little uh, ring terminals on cello tapes in the bottom of the box is there's about three fuses a couple of uh, washers and a couple of caps i'd say as is metal, this is absolutely freezing cold. My fingers don't do the cold. I have something called Reynolds. If anyone out there has that too, you'll know that very soon my fingers will be completely white if I keep touching this. So with this um, type of inverter, one of the options is a universal plug end. I think by universal, it probably mean like a Euro, US and three pin UK plug. Let me see if I've got a three pin. So here's one of our uh, little phone USB chargers, like a Samsung charger. Let's just double check this thing. With a little bit of encouragement that goes in, but I'll tell you what, it's not totally in. I'm not even sure you can call that totally, <laughs> totally in. So what have we got? We've got our positive and negative terminals and the cooling fan on that end. I mean, it's kind of fanned as if it's um, to help release heat. We've got our on-off switch. Looks like it's a digital LCD screen there. Another little LCD screen reader here. It aims to at supplying reliable power source for home appliances such as TV, DVD and electrical power tools. Please read it carefully. I don't need to read this kind of stuff. It's often written in gibberish, isn't it? Next. Very boring but small one. Part of it, there's still some more stuff to come. So these are our MC4 solar panel extension cables. So we've got our charge controller here with a little symbol for solar panels, uh, which that end will be. This end will be the one that's plugging into our array of solar panels. Now even with the array of solar panels it's not entirely straightforward reading online whether it should be in series or parallel. One of the most expensive things actually in my experience of looking up the parts that I need is obviously batteries. Solar charger thing not too expensive, individual solar panels not too expensive, inverter actually uh, imported assuming that all works not too expensive. Actually I'm kidding, this is not that heavy at all. I can carry it with one arm. Unlike the car battery that I put in the van as a bit of a test run, which requires both arms and sort of staggering about the place. So this is a branded Renogy. They're quite a prominent brand online. They do panels and batteries and controllers and all sorts of stuff. I did look into a lot of research on importing batteries from China. This size sort of parcel will travel with a courier just fine, but there seems to be a lot of risk. There's a guy called Will Prowse, who's a brilliant channel, and he takes apart batteries. You know, he actually physically cuts them open and takes a look at the individual cells and size, looks at the battery management system, what kind of technology or bus bars or components and materials for the components that are being used and it looked just like a minefield. So when you look on AliExpress, there's a whole bunch of brands you've never heard of that are at a fantastic rate, but you have no idea what you're buying. And there seems to be a lot of reports about people buying like 100 amp hour batteries when they test them, it's more like 90. To be fair, if you could pick up one that was 200 amp hours labeled as, and it only gave you 180, the price you've got it at is probably the price of a 100 amp hour battery from a reputable brand or someone you know distributing in the UK. So there are swings and roundabouts when it comes to this. I decided to go with a branded one. Now this particular brand of battery is relatively cheap compared to some of the other brands. For 100 amp hours, they could be 600 pound plus. With Black Friday deals about, it was worth looking online. I found buying from the eBay branded shop of Renogy was the cheapest place to buy. Even then they had listings that weren't in harmony with the rest of their other listings. I've gone for the Bluetooth one partly because it was one of the cheapest at about £424. Lithium as well is, is much lighter. Lead acid batteries are heavier, uh, they're cheaper, but they don't last as long. Um, whereas lithium ones are light, they last long, but they cost more. This one is a Bluetooth model. I've yet to totally understand that. Renogy do have their own app on a phone, so I'm assuming those two can communicate because I haven't got a Bluetooth module to go with my uh, MPPT charge controller. There are a higher grade models of this too, where you get um, temperature management of the battery and all sorts. I don't think it functions particularly well in the freezing cold or in extreme heat. Extreme heat, not um, a worry here in the UK. That's a can opener. Well, that's the bottle opener. Tiny knife. Mm. Renogy. 
if you want me to stick energy all over my van, powered by energy, then maybe we need to have a bit of a talk about maybe two more solar panels and another one of these. Look at that shiny black thing. Isn't that a feast for your eyes? So there we go. That's what 424 pounds will get you from Renergy. Join me in a few moments when this will be beautifully connected. Got my multimeter, stopped by a uh, Cafe B and picked up a tea because it's freezing cold out here. Hello, in your van. A van's just pulled up, I'm just going to go and see what that's all about. It's amazing. So, you'll never guess what just turned up. It's a solar panel. I can't believe it, it's here. Is that all my kit? Is that everything I ordered? No, I've got some heat shrinking tubing coming for all the connections I'm going to have to learn how to do and a crimper hydraulic crimper which I'll show you which is great another bargain I'm just going to bring in another one of these the chap just said he goes I bet these cost a bit and I said uh, well you know they're about 80 quid each he goes that's 160 quid says here I can just leave them on your doorstep thankfully we live in a bit of a cul-de-sac so we haven't got anyone walking past that house but a frightening idea especially if I bought four of these wait there the only thing is I forget I'm supposed to check sort of check and be satisfied that these have arrived okay before letting him shoot off. But hopefully, Renergy, they would have got here safely and if there is a problem, you'll work with me to fix it. I've got my multimeter with me, which I've just realised. Oh no. I took the battery out of. And then I've also got my um, little ring spanner set. You know, I'm never going to get this first go, am I? That's a sign. I won't take it as a sign actually, I'll be more positive. Positive! <laughs> love to be one of those people who just has a knack. It's another 13, isn't it? Why is it always 13? Such a superstitious number, and yet it appears to be the number that most bolts are the size of. On negative. In fact, I'm probably connecting this the wrong way around. Uh, just in case this goes wrong, uh, I'll leave everything to be, or maybe I should leave it all to Sammy. So that's our negative one connected. I've got to pop this one. Big old spark. Okay, so I might not need my multimeter. The inverter might tell me. Oh, look at the glow. Look at how beautiful that is. It tells me on here, uh, it says 13.3 volts. And there's some other stuff. I went for a 50 hertz inverter because 50 hertz is, I think, Europe, Japan, possibly Australia or something. And then 60 hertz tends to be like the US. What? I've got a little bit to learn. Obviously, the fan hasn't kicked in because I'm not pulling any load on it. But something I definitely want to test because in the last inverter we had, the fan was the noisy, annoying thing that was going off all the time. I just need to find something to plug into it and see if it works. And then I can open these two bad boys over here and make sure I haven't got two shattered as solar panels. Right, I'm back. There's something often considered a luxury, I think, in the camping and caravanning world. A hair dryer, especially if you're off grid. And while I've got hair, it could be useful. Obviously, great for B. So let's try plugging this in. Okay, that went in better. It seemed nice and flat. We're in business. Hey, the voltage has dropped to 11 and a half. I'm not sure if that means anything. Great success. I'm loving this inverter. This is the, I can't even pronounce it to be honest. Liv Yuan, Liv Yuan, Live Yin. So at the moment, I'm loving this inverter. That was a totally positive um, test result. The battery looks amazing. I'm so pleased uh, with the price point of it. There's a little bit of damage there, I've just seen. Well, I haven't had a chance to test yet. I can see it on top here. Download the Renergy DC Home app, uh, which I can't do because I'm filming with my phone. And so with my Bluetooth app, hopefully I can see how the battery's doing. 
and then the little digital readout will give me an overall sense of how the system's running. And tomorrow as well, because we've lost the light this evening, we'll have a look um, at these solar panels and check they're okay. How exciting, eh? Okay, see you tomorrow. I've left it in a bit of a state last night, it seems. Today, I'd love to, I'm a bit short on time, we're gonna try and uh, open these, double check they're okay, and then possibly take one outside, see if I can maybe get a reading off of it. Plus, I've also, I was very lucky on the fridge before with a little, if in doubt, give it a clout kind of approach, but it's not firing up again. We'll get outside in a minute and take the vent off and see if we, another little wiggle will sort that one out, otherwise that's added to the to-do list. I'm not sure opening up a great big panel inside a motorhome is wise. If you've seen one of my previous videos, we cut out some black plastic to match this size and even cut out where the feet would be and played around with it on the roof. So it's going to be nice having the real thing to hand. Right, that's one. Let's take these outside on this rather dull and dreary day and see if uh, we can get a measurement off them. Let's go. So we're outside and I've angled the solar panels to face the sun, which is a little bit of a joke because if you looked up, it just looks like dirty dishwater in the sky today. <laughs> I know it's somewhere over there though. So I've got this set up. As you can see, the uh, reading is a little disappointing. Not sure if that's the weather or if it's me. I really hope I haven't got some damaged panels. I mean, I'm, I'm, my assumption is the glass could be broken, but obviously there's more to panels than just glass. But two out of two broken? That seems like a, a high kind of failure rate. So um, I'm running out of time now. We've got to start prepping the van, getting some water in the tanks for our little trip. I'm going to have to come back to those another day. But I definitely need to make sure that they're working. And prep the van we did. Join us next time on the first part of our next escape to Bath and the Forest of Dean. Until then, thanks for watching.